Welcome back. This is the Jim Bohannon Show. We're talking with Pat Brown. She's the founder of the Pat Brown Profiling Agency. They're online at patbrownprofiling.com. And uh, for those who haven't heard your previous appearances on this and, and many other programs, uh, what is it that you do? <laughs> well, uh, my main job is to do criminal profiling, which I look at cold cases and uh, do crime reconstruction and deter try to determine what might have happened, and that's what the police can use as a lead or to start looking in a certain direction uh, to try to get a focus on a case. Uh, and, of course, I do a lot of television, which is commentary and not profiling, but uh, I yeah. enjoy that as well because it's a good educational yeah. route. Uh, I, I'm wondering, uh, since uh, apparently a lot of this uh, this focus is, is based in Britain, we, we tend to think, I guess, of the British as almost just, quote, us. Well, <laughs> we have a common language and we have uh, two free societies, but there are differences, significant differences. And I... I understand that the libel laws may be one area where there are Ooh, differences. Extremely. If they're extremely vicious right now in Britain, which is why uh, p there's been a lot, pretty much a shutdown of a lot of the media, especially in this case. And I've had a lot of letters coming in from from uh, people living in the uh, UK, and they're like, please do please speak out because we can't speak out any longer in, in Britain. It's just not allowed. And they're very frustrated with the fact that they don't have that freedom. I think there's something recently afoot where they're trying to ease up on that because they're getting it's getting to be like a totalitarian society where you can't say anything. And while it's true we may be uncomfortable with what somebody says about us, and certainly I know because I, I've been on the receiving end of all kinds of interesting commentary, and I, as long as it's opinion, I have to live with it. I think it's the people's right to speak their opinion. But when you shut down a society and say you can no longer say anything, that somebody doesn't like, you got a problem. What do you put forward in the, the profile of the disappearance of, of Madeleine McCann? What uh, conclusions do you reach? Well, um, again, it's a theory, so I always have to start with that. So there's and, and I understand yeah. you're not at all shy about pointing that out. It yes, is uh, a theory. I, I have to point that out. I mean, and it really is. Uh, well, I mean, you weren't, you weren't shy about doing it before you had to point it out, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, isn't that true? Yeah. Well, the point being that it is a theory. It is my theory. Uh, it doesn't mean it's a fact. It doesn't mean it is true. It doesn't mean this is what happened. It's a theory of what could have happened. Uh, and one of the, the most important thing to be pointed out right away is that there is no evidence of an abduction. And that's where the whole thing started to go wrong in people's minds, that maybe we're not getting the straight story here. Um, right after Madeline went missing, uh, the Kate and Jerry called over to England, well actually Jerry did, and he told a number of relatives that Madeline had been abduct abducted uh, and somebody had Jimmy the shutters of the window uh, essentially crawling in and taking Madeline away. Well, it turned out there was no evidence of anybody coming in that window. Hmm. And uh, when and I've always wondered, you know, are the, uh, would the McCann say that the police did a poor job on this and they're lying about this? But when Kate wrote her book, she admitted there was no evidence of anybody coming through that window. Then how do they propose that the break-in occurred? Well, now kind of what they what they've set up is every day of the week they said they locked the doors to that apartment. Now, wouldn't you, if your apartment, you're in a strange country, and right. you have an apartment that's on a, uh, it's on a corner, right. there's a road going right behind it, and there's a car park behind it, mm -hmm. I don't think you would leave the doors unlocked. When you, well, it's bad enough that you leave three children alone, so yeah. most of us wouldn't do that either. Right. But would you leave your three children alone and leave the doors unlocked so anybody could just come in? Don't think so. We wouldn't think so. Well, neither did the McCann, so for four days, they locked the doors. The fifth day comes along, and they say they left the the sliding door open in the back so that somebody could go check on their ch children when they w were busy. And that's never been done before. So, so suddenly on the last day, supposedly, somebody else checks on their ch child, and the door is left open. So you have to wonder, is that really what happened, or was the place really locked? Because if it was locked down, then Madeline was not abducted. Something happened to her in the apartment, an accident. That was then covered up. Uh, so you have to have a way for her to get out of that apartment, so you have to have an open door. What have the authorities had to say? Obviously, they have long since investigated this uh, ad infinitum. Yes, Detective Amaral uh, believed, he, he was the one that believed strongly that that Madeleine McCann died in the apartment. They brought in dogs. Uh, one dog uh, identified decomposition behind the sofa, which is where Amaral believes Madeline died. Uh, the other dog found blood 
and these are sniffer dogs, so this is not so we can see, found blood in the same location. And so Amaral believed that Madeline had an accident while they were out at the, at the restaurant. And he believes to this day that they were responsible for what happened to their daughter. And that's why he wrote the book, which got, you know, they, they sued him for. Mm -hmm. But they're not suing you. And not yet. that I know of. Not that you know of. <laughs> I have yet. not received a cease and desist letter, yeah. nor have a, has anybody approached me on that. Mm -hmm. um, ha, ha, do you think that you have had a, a, a chip on your shoulder uh, that you just had it in for, uh, for the McCann? McCann? Yeah, I mean that that's the, is the gist of this. Email yeah, that was gratuitously yeah. dropped on me. Right. Um, I, I have a thing for justice. I have a thing for the truth, and I, as a profiler, I'm very bugged by things when I say, wait a minute, something's fishy about this. Something is, something seems off here. It seems like the truth is not coming out. I have spoken up very strongly in certain crimes where I believe that we're not getting the full story. And this was one of them. And because of the, the McCann's had a very high profile, they did a lot of media uh, appearances. And every time I saw them, things rang wrong again. I'm thinking, why are you saying that? Why are you doing that? So I think if they hadn't been in the media so much and I hadn't been so aware of what they were saying, I wouldn't have commented so often. So uh, they made themselves, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they put themselves out there. And when you do, just like me, I'm going to get people who have things to say about me. Well, un unfortunately, I guess it sort of goes with the nature of your work that if you don't like Pat Brown, get in line. Yeah, well, pretty much. How yeah. many? I mean, <laughs> I mean, there there have to be just by the nature of what you've done, uh, a lot of folks who don't think kindly of you. Well, what will happen in is when you out when you're outspoken, and and I've I've never been accused of not being outspoken. That's true. Uh, you know, there are some people who go on television, for example, and talk about a case, and they'll be very careful about well this could have happened or that could have happened maybe she did maybe she didn't and you think well what do you think <laughs> well when i talk about a case i'm pretty blunt about what i think here's what the evidence here is and here's what i think happened pat brown our guest the founder of the pat brown profiling agency online at patbrownprofiling.com her profile of the disappearance of madeline mccann is available at barnes and noble bn.com and also at smashwords 